So before we get into this, comment down below, let me know what car you're looking to put an intake on and why. So common discussion I see on small block Chevy, Pontiac, Mopar, well basically everybody's forums and groups is the discussion between single and dual plane intakes. Now the question is often, what's better for my setup? And almost universally, people always say dual plane. Um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I am a single plane fan, but typically I'm throwing my stuff to higher RPMs than most guys. And this is gonna irritate some of the Pontiac guys, but I try to reduce torque on the low end. I might be killing myself on the low end of the scale, but that said, I'm trying not to burn tires to begin with, You know, but that can be manipulated with other things. If you can get great traction, the dual plane might be a better way to go. That said, higher RPM band on the single plane, so let's look at why one is a high RPM range and the other one, and the other one is not necessarily a high RPM range. So here we have the Edelbrock Torker 2 and a 69 Pontiac 400 dual plane intake. The big thing with the single plane intake is the short runners, the large plenum space, and the high RPM you gain. Um, a lot of people go these because of the square bore, um, getting away from the Q-Jets. The Q-Jets are actually a really good carburetor if you let them be. But again, what makes this a single plane is this single plane. You see down here in the floor, there is one height in the floor. There are two heights in the floor on this intake. The big deal with that is the lower ones go to separate runners from the higher ones, so they are able to achieve basically the same runner length, specifically two different runners, as where the single plane is kind of a shared plenum space. Something to consider with single planes as well is, is they typically take really well the spacers. So if you're running a carb spacer, like a one inch carb spacer, you could probably get a little more RPM out of it. Um, but it's really dependent on your engine, your combination, whether you got ram air, um, your cam, your heads. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things, your stall, whether you want to go single or dual plane. Now, single plane will typically always have a lower end loss versus the dual plane. The dual plane usually will peak out at a lower RPM because of the longer runner length. Um, the typical runner length of a single plane is going to be like three to four, maybe five inches. Um, as where dual planes can be anywhere from um, five to maybe 10 inches, depending on the manufacturer, cross ram, things like that. There's a lot of other things you could do to manipulate runner length with a dual plane that you just can't do on a single plane, unless you go tunnel ram, which is a totally different intake entirely. But that being said, there are ways to manipulate the plenum space with things like the Brodix Turtle. Um, and we'll talk about that at another date because I want to run a bunch of tests. Uh, that is why this intake is not chopped up. Once we get the Firebird going, we're going to run a bunch of intake temperature tests because I want to show you guys a few very specific things with Pontiac intakes and how we can maximize our power with what we have. Subscribe for that because that'll come more than likely in the spring. But enough talking out here, let's go inside to the studio and look at some hard numbers. You know, but now that we're inside, we actually can look at a few things. And I want to talk first about why single plane and dual plane matters. And so if you're going to be under that 5,000 RPM range all the time and basically not revving that car out, a dual plane really is the way to go. So dual planes are gonna do two things for you. They're gonna bring your power curve a little lower and they're gonna increase the length of that power curve. Single planes are known for adding more power, typically in peak, but you usually lose a lot of the average chunk of your horsepower. But that really depends on how you set up your particular single plane intake, your cam, things like that. The big thing to consider is an intake is just a part. It's a piece of an engine and you need to build that engine how you want it to perform. So. Consider your cam, consider your heads, consider your flow numbers, consider everything before you pick an intake. Because if you put a single plane intake on something that's got a super low duration and low lift, it's just not gonna perform well. If you put a dual plane on something that's got extremely high lift um, and long duration, it might get you out of the hole, but you're gonna be missing a huge chunk of horsepower that could be possible with a single plane intake. But with all that said, let's look at these numbers and get a kind of idea, and then I wanna talk about two different engine setups and why I would use a single plane on one and a dual plane on the other. If you look below 4,000 RPM, there is a loss with the single plane. Though it is marginal, it would probably be felt because the torque number differences are actually a big deal here. Look at 2,500. I mean, you're cutting out 20 foot-pounds of torque. You would likely feel that in a car. Um, that said, if you're running a, you know, if you're running a stall, then this is where you want to be running your stall anyway. It's 2,500 RPM, so that you can just kick it on up there and get where you need to get with a single plane intake. But really anything below 4,000 RPM is a loss with a single plane. Anything above that is typically a gain. Um, and this isn't really that far-fetched. It's not that crazy. And we see it happen all the time. And that's why guys talk about, you know, don't jump on the single plane bandwagon because you're gonna lose lower end. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're gonna lose lower end typically unless the intake is just better all around than the stock factory intake. But Pontiac and small block Chevys for the most part have pretty decent 
uh, factory intakes, especially when they're ported. But with that little visual in your head, now let's move on to optimizing these engines for a single or dual plane intake. Consider when you're looking at picking an intake as well as your, as your head intake runner. So essentially what that's gonna change is as you port your head, that intake runner is gonna get larger and larger. So essentially you're increasing the CC of that intake runner. So you can go from 153 CC to 180 CC and that's gonna increase your RPM range because of the larger volume, um, but it's also gonna kill your torque down low. So let's take a look at milled unported 6X4 heads on a 400 with a comp thumper cam and a dual plane intake with a 750 carburetor. So you notice that the horsepower numbers aren't crazy high. Um, the torque isn't crazy high, but there's no point of building this engine to go to that 5,000, 5,500, 6,000 RPM range if you're not gonna do it. Um, keeping this giant chunk of power down low is probably a lot more beneficial to most people. But let's save this. Now that we have this baseline of a pretty much well-sorted dual plane intake setup, let's take a look at something that I'm more familiar with, which is a single plane intake setup. You know, so when you're looking at this chart and you consider something major here, we're losing 100 foot-pounds of torque down low. While that might seem like a bad thing, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, this is horsepower and torque that you're actually losing because you're spinning your tires, right? If you can make it hook, yeah, the dual plane will walk all over this single plane car because of the 60 foot. Once you hit the 330, something like that, the single plane car is gonna put buses on that dual plane car. We also need to consider that if we look here, that there is a crazy difference in horsepower. I'm talking 144 horsepower difference at 6,000 RPM. And if you're shifting this car like 6,200, 6,300 RPM, you're gonna be right there and you're gonna be just in the power the entire time. You know, guys talk about all this low on torque and low on horsepower. Well, it doesn't matter if you're never there at wide open throttle. Why are you building there? You know, I just can't understand why you're building low end if I'm not using that low end power. You know, but again, this is a function of a very expensive setup. In order to run this car, you're gonna want 373 gears, you need the ported heads, you need the big cam, you need a 4L80, you need a 3200 RPM stall, you need a bunch of things to make this car run effectively. And that's what they're talking about, it's, just, it's expensive. Um, that said, for what we're using these cars for, that's fine, I mean, they're toys. They're meant to be beat on, they're meant to be enjoyed, they're meant to be you know, a, a piece of enjoyment for us. Now you guys are curious about the built engine with the single plane, built engine with the dual plane. So let's take a look at that. So the big thing we should expect here is our torque number should usually improve on the average um, or just stay about the same, but the horsepower will usually drop because it's not breathing out of that top end. Um, I found a lot of the single planes want to flow like 213 to 250 CFM factory. Um, that's like a torque or two on the low end and like a Victor Junior on the high end. The dual planes usually want to flow 180-ish, I think, for RPM. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, is you might have to hog it out a little bit and do a little bit of work on it if you want to reach the higher horsepower numbers. But, you know, it's all just a bit of time and a little bit of effort. Like I was saying, the peak torque really didn't drop that much. The average torque didn't really drop at all. The peak horsepower dropped quite a bit, which we expected, and the average dropped quite a bit, which we expected. And the average dropped quite a bit, which we expected. Let's take a look at the chart, though. You know, for most guys, this is an absolutely, totally acceptable change. Um, you're gaining quite a bit of torque down low, and you're not losing that much up high. So if you don't spend a ton of time up there, it's not a huge deal. Um, personally, I would still run the single plane intake with the stall, just because I don't want to give up that extra... You know, personally, I'd still run a single plane on this, because I don't want to give up that extra 20 horse up top. That's why I'm building the engine, why I built it, and set up the car how I did. You know, all of this being said, really, it's up to you and what you're building the car for. If I was going to drive the car every single day, I'd probably put a dual plane on something and run a lower duration cam, a little smaller heads, and just enjoy the car. If I'm racing the car, single plane, big heads, big exhaust, big cam, and just all out crazy is what I'm going for. So really, like I said, it depends on what you're building the car for. You know, and that being said, comment down below and let me know what you guys are building for. I really want to know what your guys' goals are in your cars. If you like seeing content like this, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to put more stuff out like this every week. You know, I'm constantly looking for ideas. So if you guys have an idea of what you want to see, comment down below and let me know that as well. But that's all I've got for today, so have a good one, and I will see you on the road.